In linguistics, grammatical gender is a specific form of noun class system in which the division of noun classes forms an agreement system with another aspect of the language, such as adjectives, articles, pronouns, or verbs. This system is used in approximately one quarter of the world's languages. In these languages, most or all nouns inherently carry one value of the grammatical category called gender. The values present in a given language, of which there are usually two or three, are called the genders of that language. According to one definition, genders are classes of nouns reflected in the behavior of associated words. Common gender divisions include masculine and feminine, masculine, feminine and neuter, or animate and inanimate. In a few languages, the gender assignment of nouns is solely determined by their meaning or attributes, like biological sex, humanness, animacy. However, in most languages, this semantic division is only partially valid, and many nouns may belong to a gender category that contrasts with their meaning e.g. the word for manliness could be of feminine gender. In this case, the gender assignment can also be influenced by the morphology or phonology of the noun, or in some cases can be apparently arbitrary. Grammatical gender manifests itself when words related to a noun like determiners, pronouns or adjectives change their form inflect according to the gender of noun they refer to agreement. The parts of speech affected by gender agreement, the circumstances in which it occurs, and the way words are marked for gender vary between languages. Gender inflection may interact with other grammatical categories like number or case. In some languages the declension pattern followed by the noun itself will be different for different genders. Grammatical gender is found in many Indo-European languages including Spanish, French, Russian, German and Hindi, but not Persian or English, for example, Afroasiatic languages which includes the Semitic and Berber languages, etc., and in other language families such as Dravidian and Northeast Caucasian, as well as several Australian Aboriginal languages such as Gerbil, and Kalalaga Ya. Most Niger-Congo languages also have extensive systems of noun classes, which can be grouped into several grammatical genders. Conversely, grammatical gender is usually absent from the Koreanic, Japonic, Tungusic, Turkic, Mongolic, Austronesian, Sino-Tibetan, Uralic and most Native American language families. Modern English makes use of gender in pronouns, which are generally marked for natural gender, but lacks a system of gender concord within the noun phrase which is one of the central elements of grammatical gender in most other Indo-European languages. Overview In languages with grammatical gender, each noun is assigned to one of the classes called genders, which form a closed set. Most such languages usually have from two to four different genders, but some are attested with up to twenty. The division into genders usually correlates to some degree, at least for a certain set of nouns, such as those denoting humans, with some property or properties of the things that particular nouns denote. Such properties include animacy or inanimacy, humanness or non-humanness, and biological sex. Few or no nouns can occur in more than one class. Depending on the language and the word, this assignment might bear some relationship with the meaning of the noun, e.g., woman is usually feminine, or may be arbitrary. Gender is considered an inherent quality of nouns, and it affects the forms of other related words, a process called agreement. Nouns may be considered the triggers of the process, whereas other words will be the target of these changes. These related words can be, depending on the language, determiners, pronouns, numerals, quantifiers, possessives, adjectives, past and passive participles, articles, verbs, adverbs, complementizers, and adpositions. Gender class may be marked on the noun itself, but will also always be marked on other constituents in a noun phrase or sentence. If the noun is explicitly marked, both trigger and target may feature similar alternations. Common systems of gender division include masculine feminine. Here nouns that denote specifically male persons or animals are normally of masculine gender. Those that denote specifically female persons or animals are normally of feminine gender. And nouns that denote something that does not have any sex or do not specify the sex of their referent have come to belong to one or other of the genders in a way that may appear arbitrary. Examples of languages with such a system include most of the modern Romance languages, the Baltic languages, the Celtic languages, Hindustani, and the Afroasiatic languages. Masculine-feminine neuter, this is similar to the masculine-feminine system, except that there is a third available gender, so nouns with sexless or unspecified sex reference may be either masculine, feminine, or neuter. 
There are also certain exceptional nouns whose gender does not follow the denoted sex, such as the German Mädchen, meaning girl, which is neuter. This is because it is actually a diminutive of magd, and all diminutive forms with the suffix chen are neuter. Examples of languages with such a system include later forms of Proto-Indo-European see below, Sanskrit, Norwegian in most dialects and in both written forms Bokmal and Nynorsk, Marathi, Greek, Latin, Romanian, German, Standard Dutch and some dialects and the Slavic languages. Animate inanimate, here nouns that denote animate things humans and animals generally belong to one gender, and those that denote inanimate things to another although there may be some deviation from that principle. Examples include earlier forms of Proto-Indo-European and the earliest family known to have split off from it, the extinct Anatolian languages see below. Modern examples include, to some extent, Basque, and Ojibwe, in Northern Kurdish language Kermanji. the same word can have two genders according to the context. For example, if the word dar meaning wood or tree is feminine, it means that it is a living tree e.g. dara seve means apple tree. But if it is masculine, it means that it is dead, no longer living e.g. der seve means apple wood. So if one wants to say a certain table is made of the wood from an apple tree, he or she cannot use the word dar in a feminine gender, and if he or she wants to refer to the apple tree in his or her garden cannot use dar with masculine gender. Common neuter, here a masculine-feminine neuter system previously existed, but the distinction between masculine and feminine genders has been lost, they have merged into what is called common gender. Thus nouns denoting people are usually of common gender, whereas other nouns may be of either gender. Examples include Danish and Swedish see gender in Danish and Swedish, and to some extent Dutch see gender in Dutch grammar. The dialect of the old Norwegian capital Bergen also uses common gender and neuter exclusively. The common gender in Bergen and in Danish is inflected with the same articles and suffixes as the masculine gender in Norwegian Bokmal. This makes some obviously feminine noun phrases like a cute girl, the well-milking cow, or the pregnant mares sound strange to most Norwegian ears when spoken by Danes and people from Bergen since they are inflected in a way that sounds like the masculine declensions in southeastern Norwegian dialects. The same does not apply to Swedish common gender, as the declensions follow a different pattern than both the Norwegian written languages. Norwegian Nynorsk, Norwegian Bokmal and most spoken dialects retain masculine, feminine and neuter even if their Scandinavian neighbors have lost one of the genders. As shown, the merger of masculine and feminine in these languages and dialects can be considered a reversal of the original split in Proto-Indo-European see below, other types of division or subdivision may be found in particular languages. These may sometimes be referred to as classes rather than genders, for some examples, see noun class. In some of the Slavic languages, for example, within the masculine and sometimes feminine and neuter genders, there is a further division between animate and inanimate nouns, and in Polish, also sometimes between nouns denoting humans and non-humans, for details, see below, a human non-human or rational non-rational distinction is also found in Dravidian languages. See below. Topic. Consequences of gender The grammatical gender of a noun manifests itself in two principal ways, in the modifications that the noun itself undergoes, and in modifications of other related words agreement. These are described in the following sections. Topic. Noun inflection The gender of a noun may affect the modifications that the noun itself undergoes, particularly the way in which the noun inflects for number and case. For example, a language like Latin, German or Russian has a number of different declension patterns, and which pattern a particular noun follows may be highly correlated with its gender. For some instances of this, see Latin declension. A concrete example is provided by the German word C, which has two possible genders, when it is masculine meaning lake. Its genitive singular form is sees, but when it is feminine meaning see, the genitive is see, because feminine nouns do not take the genitive s. Gender is sometimes reflected in other ways. In Welsh, gender marking is mostly lost on nouns, however, Welsh has initial mutation, where the first consonant of a word changes into another in certain conditions. Gender is one of the factors that can cause one form of mutation, soft mutation. For instance, the word merch, girl, changes into firk after the definite article. 
This only occurs with feminine singular nouns, mab, son, remains unchanged. Adjectives are affected by gender in a similar way. Additionally, in many languages, gender is often closely correlated with the basic unmodified form lemma of the noun, and sometimes a noun can be modified to produce for example, masculine and feminine words of similar meaning. See section correlation between gender and the form of a noun, below. Topic. Agreement Agreement, or concord, is a grammatical process in which certain words change their form so that values of certain grammatical categories match those of related words. Gender is one of the categories which frequently require agreement. In this case, nouns may be considered the triggers of the process, because they have an inherent gender, whereas related words that change their form to match the gender of the noun can be considered the target of these changes. These related words can be, depending on the language, determiners, pronouns, numerals, quantifiers, possessives, adjectives, past and passive participles, verbs, adverbs, complementizers, and adpositions. Gender class may be marked on the noun itself, but can also be marked on other constituents in a noun phrase or sentence. If the noun is explicitly marked, both trigger and target may feature similar alternations. As an example, we consider Spanish, a language with two noun genders, masculine and feminine. Among other lexical items, the definite article changes its form according to the gender of the noun. In the singular, the article is el masculine, and la feminine. Thus, nouns referring to male beings carry the masculine article, and female beings the feminine article agreement. However, every noun must belong to one of the two categories. Even nouns referring to sexless entities must be either masculine or feminine. Generally, a word that ends in a is feminine and in o masculine. However, not all words end in a or o. In the Spanish sentences el es un buen actor, he is a good actor, and ella es una buena actriz, she is a good actress. Almost every word undergoes gender-related changes. The noun actor changes by replacing the masculine suffix or with the feminine suffix ris, the personal pronoun el, he, changes to ella, she, and the feminine suffix a is added to the article un una and to the adjective buen buena. When a verb is used as a noun, it is almost always masculine. On the other hand, the result of executing a verb is almost always feminine. The following highly contrived Old English sentence provides similar examples of gender agreement. The word hire, her, refers to lind, shield. Because this noun was grammatically feminine, the adjectives braid, broad, and tilu, good, as well as the pronoun co, the, that, and hire, her, which referred to lind, must also appear in their feminine forms. Old English had three genders, masculine, feminine and neuter, but gender inflections like many other types of inflection in English were later greatly simplified by sound changes, and then completely lost. In modern English, by contrast, the noun shield takes the neuter pronoun it, because it designates a sexless object. In a sense, the neuter gender has grown to encompass most nouns, including many that were masculine or feminine in Old English. If one were to replace the phrase, broad shield, Above with brave man or brave woman, the only change to the rest of the sentence would be in the pronoun at the end, which would become him or her respectively. Topic. Gender assignment There are three main ways by which natural languages categorize nouns into genders, according to logical or symbolic similarities in their meaning semantic, by grouping them with other nouns that have similar form morphological, and through apparently arbitrary convention lexical, possibly rooted in the language's history. In most languages that have grammatical gender, a combination of these three types of criteria is found, although one type may be more prevalent. Topic. Strict semantic criteria In some languages, the gender of a noun is directly determined by its physical attributes sex, animacy, etc., and there are few or no exceptions to this rule. There are relatively few such languages. The Dravidian languages use this system as described below. Another example is the Dizi language, which has two asymmetrical genders. The feminine includes all living beings of female sex e.g. woman, girl, cow. 
and diminutives, the masculine encompasses all other nouns e.g. man, boy, pot, broom. In this language, feminine nouns are always marked with e or in. Another African language, Defaka, has three genders, one for all male humans, one for all female humans, and a third for all the remaining nouns. Gender is only marked in personal pronouns. Standard English pronouns see below are very similar in this respect, although the English gendered pronouns he, she are used for domestic animals if the sex of the animal is known, and sometimes for certain objects such as ships, e.g., what happened to the Titanic? She or it sank. Topic: <inaudible> Mostly semantic criteria. In some other languages, the gender of nouns can again mostly be determined by physical semantic attributes, although there remain some nouns whose gender is not assigned in this way. Corbett calls this semantic residue. The world view e mythology of the speakers may influence the division of categories, an example is the Zandi language, which has four genders, male-human, female-human, animal, and inanimate. However, there are about 80 nouns representing inanimate entities which are nonetheless animate in gender, heavenly objects moon, rainbow, metal objects hammer, ring, edible plants sweet potato, pea, and non-metallic objects whistle, ball. Many have a round shape or can be explained by the role they play in mythology. The Ket language has three genders masculine, feminine, and neuter, and most gender assignment is based on semantics, but there are many inanimate nouns outside the neuter class. Masculine nouns include male animates, most fish, trees, the moon, large wooden objects, most living beings, and some religious items. Feminine nouns include female animates, three types of fish, some plants, the sun and other heavenly objects, some body parts and skin diseases, the soul, and some religious items. Words for part of a whole, as well as most other nouns that do not fall into any of the aforementioned classes, are neuter. The gender assignment of non-sex differentiable things is complex. In general, those of no importance to the kets are feminine, whereas objects of importance e.g. fish, wood are masculine. Mythology is again a significant factor. The Alamblack language has two genders, masculine and feminine. However, the masculine also includes things which are tall or long and slender, or narrow, e.g., fish, snakes, arrows, and slender trees, whereas the feminine gender has things which are short, squat, or wide, e.g., turtles, houses, shields, and squat trees. The distinction between the gender of a noun and the gender of the object it refers to is clear when nouns of different genders can be used for the same object, e.g., French vélo m equals bicyclette f. Topic. Correlation between gender and the form of a noun In many other languages, nouns are assigned to gender largely without any semantic basis, that is, not based on any feature such as animacy or sex of the person or thing that a noun represents. However, in many languages there may be a correlation, to a greater or lesser degree, between gender and the form of a noun such as the letter or syllable with which it ends. For example, in Portuguese and Spanish, nouns that end in O or a consonant are mostly masculine, whereas those that end in A are mostly feminine, regardless of their meaning. Nouns that end in some other vowel are assigned a gender either according to etymology, by analogy, or by some other convention. These rules may override semantics in some cases, for example, the noun membro, miembro, member, is always masculine, even when it refers to a girl or a woman, and pessoa, persona, person is always feminine, even when it refers to a boy or a man. In other cases, though, meaning takes precedence, the noun communista communist, is masculine when it refers or could refer to a man, even though it ends with a. In fact, nouns in Spanish and Portuguese as in the other Romance languages such as Italian and French generally follow the gender of the Latin words from which they are derived. When nouns deviate from the rules for gender, there is usually an etymological explanation, problema, problem is masculine in Spanish because it was derived from a Greek noun of the neuter gender, whereas photo, photo and radio broadcast signal are feminine because they are clippings of photographia and radiodiffusion respectively, both grammatically feminine nouns. Most Spanish nouns in ion are feminine, they derive from Latin feminines in o, accusative ionum, but the opposite is correct with Northern Kurdish language or Kermanshi. For example, the words endam member and hevel friend can be masculine or feminine according to the person they refer to. Keka y hevala min e, his daughter is my friend. 
Kuri y hevel min e, his son is my friend suffixes often carry a specific gender. For example, in German, diminutives with the suffixes chen and lean meaning little, young, are always neuter, even if they refer to people, as with Mädchen, girl, and Fräulein, young woman, see below. Similarly, the suffix ling, which makes countable nouns from uncountable nouns teg, do, tegeling, piece of dough, or personal nouns from abstract nouns lair, teaching, strafe, punishment, lairling, apprentice, strafling, convict, or adjectives fiege, cowardly, feigling, coward, always produces masculine nouns. And the German suffixes height and keet comparable with hood and ness in English produce feminine nouns. In Irish, nouns ending in or, eoir and in are always masculine, whereas those ending og, eog or lan are always feminine. In Arabic, nouns whose singular form ends in at marbuta traditionally at, becoming h in pasa are of feminine gender, the only significant exceptions being the word clift khalifa caliph", and certain masculine personal names e asamt usama. However, many masculine nouns take at marbuta in their plural, for example asta usta male professor", has the plural asatidht asatida, which might be confused for a feminine singular noun. Gender may also be predictable from the type of derivation, for instance, the verbal nouns of stem 2 e.g. altful al taf il, from fl, yfl fa ala, ufa il, are always masculine. In French, nouns ending in e tend to be feminine, whereas others tend to be masculine, but there are many exceptions to this e.g. cadre, arbor, signe, mubile, nuage are masculine as facon, chanson, voy, main, o are feminine. Note the many masculine nouns ending in e preceded by double consonants. Certain suffixes are quite reliable indicators, such as age, which when added to a verb e.g. garer, to park, garage, nettoyer, to clean, nettoyage, cleaning, Indicates a masculine noun, however, when age is part of the root of the word, it can be feminine, as in plage, beach, or image. On the other hand, nouns ending in tion, scion and asin are all feminine. Nouns can sometimes vary their form to enable the derivation of differently gendered cognate nouns, for example, to produce nouns with a similar meaning but referring to someone of a different sex. Thus, in Spanish, niño means boy, and niña means girl. This paradigm can be exploited for making new words, from the masculine nouns abogado, lawyer, diputado, member of parliament, and doctor, doctor. It was straightforward to make the feminine equivalents abogada, diputada, and doctora. In the same way, personal names are frequently constructed with affixes that identify the sex of the bearer. Common feminine suffixes used in English names are a, of Latin or Romance origin, cf. Robert and Roberta, and E, of French origin cf. Justin and Justine. Although gender inflection may be used to construct nouns and names for people of opposite sexes in languages that have grammatical gender, this alone does not constitute grammatical gender. Distinct words and names for men and women are also common in languages which do not have a grammatical gender system for nouns in general. English, for example, has feminine suffixes such as s as in actress, waitress, etc., and also distinguishes male and female personal names, as in the above examples. Topic. Gender in personal names Given names are proper nouns and they follow the same gender grammatical rules as common nouns. In most Indo-European languages female grammatical gender is created using an a or an e ending. Classical Latin typically made a grammatical feminine gender in a silva, forest, aqua, water and this was reflected in feminine names originating in that period, like Amelia. Romance languages preserved this characteristic. For example, Spanish has approximately 89% feminine nouns with an a ending and 98% given names with the same ending. In the Germanic languages, the female names have been Latinized by adding e and a. Brunhild, Kriemhild, and Heroswith became Brunhilda, Kriemhild, and Roswitha. Slavic feminine given names, Olga Russian, Malgorzada Polish, Tishiana Ukrainian, Oksana Belarusian, Aliska Czech, Bronislava Slovak, Malika Serbian, Darina Bulgarian, Lucia Croatian, Lamia Bosnian and Zala Slovenian. Topic: <laughs> Apparent absence of criteria. 
In some languages, any gender markers have been so eroded over time possibly through deflection that they are no longer recognizable. Many German nouns, for example, do not indicate their gender through either meaning or form. In such cases a noun's gender must simply be memorized, and gender can be regarded as an integral part of each noun when considered as an entry in the speaker's lexicon. This is reflected in dictionaries, which typically indicate the gender of noun headwords where applicable. Second language learners are often encouraged to memorize a modifier, usually a definite article, in conjunction with each noun. For example, a learner of French may learn the word for chair as la chaise, meaning the chair. This carries the information that the noun is chaise, and that it is feminine because la is the feminine singular form of the definite article. When learning a second language such as Spanish speakers are encouraged to memorize articles either the l or the la in front of the word. Generally they correspond with o being masculine and a being feminine. However, there are exceptions to this rule. Examples of some words that are considered exceptions would be el panda the panda, el dia the day, la mano the hand, el cura the priest, etc. Topic. Nouns with more than one gender It is relatively uncommon for a noun to have more than one possible gender. When this happens, it may be associated with a difference in the sex of the referent, as with nouns such as communista in Spanish, which may be either masculine or feminine, depending on whether it refers to a male or a female. It may also correspond to some other difference in the meaning of the word. For example, the German word sea meaning lake is masculine, whereas the identical word meaning sea is feminine. The meanings of the Norwegian noun ting have diverged further. Masculine en ting is a thing, whereas neuter et ting is an assembly. The parliament is the storting, the great ting. The other tings like borgarding are the regional courts. It is a matter of analysis how to draw the line between a single polysemous word with multiple genders and a set of homonyms with one gender each. For example, Bulgarian has a pair of homonyms prist, prist which are etymologically unrelated. One is masculine and means finger. The other is feminine and means soil. Sometimes a noun's gender can change between plural and singular, as with the French words amour, love, dailies, delight, and org, organ, as musical instrument, all of which are masculine in the singular but feminine in the plural. These anomalies may have a historical explanation Amur used to be feminine in the singular too or result from slightly different notions Org in the singular is usually a barrel organ, whereas the plural orgs usually refers to the collection of columns in a church organ. Further examples are the Italian words uovo egg, and braccio arm. These are masculine in the singular, but form the irregular plurals uova and braccia, which have the endings of the feminine singular, but have feminine plural agreement. This is related to the forms of the second declension Latin neuter nouns from which they derive, ovum and brachium, with nominative plurals ova and brachia. In other cases, a word may be usable in multiple genders indifferently. For example, in Bulgarian the word pustos, pustosh, wilderness, may be either masculine definite form pustosa, pustosh, or feminine definite form pustosta, pustoshta, without any change in meaning and no preference in usage. In Norwegian, many nouns can be either feminine or masculine according to the dialect, level of formality or whim of the speaker, writer. Even the two written forms of the language have many nouns whose gender is optional. Choosing the masculine gender will often seem more formal than using the feminine. This might be because before the creation of Norwegian Nynorsk and Norwegian Bokmal in the late 19th century, Norwegians wrote Danish, which has lost the feminine gender, thus making use of the masculine gender corresponding exactly to Danish common gender in conjugation in Norwegian Bokmal is more formal sounding to modern Norwegians. The noun, son, can be another example. You might decline it masculine, en sol, solen, solar, solene, or feminine. A sol, sola, solar, solin. In Norwegian Bakmal. The same goes for a lot of common words like bok, book, duck, dal, bot, bucket, and so forth. Many of the words where it is possible to choose gender are inanimate objects that one might suspect would be conjugated with the neuter gender. Nouns conjugated with the neuter gender can normally not be conjugated as feminine or masculine in Norwegian. 
There is also a slight tendency towards using the masculine indefinite article even when choosing the feminine conjugation of a noun in many Eastern Norwegian dialects. For instance, girl, en genta, genta, genter, gentine. Topic: <laughs> Genderless nouns. In some languages the gender is distinguished only in singular number but not in plural. In terms of linguistic markedness, these languages neutralize the gender opposition in the plural, itself a marked category. So adjectives and pronouns have three forms in singular e.g. Bulgarian servin, servina serveno or German roter, rote, rotes but only one in plural Bulgarian serveni, German rote all examples mean red. As a consequence plurally tantum nouns lacking a singular form cannot be assigned a gender. Example with Bulgarian, klesi kleshti, pincers, gasi goshti, pants, osila ochila, spectacles, ril ril, gills. The characteristic ending of osila suggests a neuter noun, but there is no way to cross-check it and there are indeed a few masculine nouns using the same ending in their plural kraka and roga are plurals of masculine crack, leg and raj horn. However, the endings i and e do not make any such indications because they are ambiguous themselves, although i is the regular ending for masculine and feminine nouns, both are in fact used to form plurals of nouns of all three genders e.g. zavadi, zeni nisekomi from masculine zavad, factory, feminine zina, woman, and neuter nasekomo, insect, or krail, rce choline from masculine crawl, king, feminine arca, hand, and neuter kalano, knee. Other languages, e.g. Serbo-Croatian, allow doubly marked forms both for number and gender. In these languages, each noun has a definite gender no matter the number. For example, djeca, children, is feminine singularia tantum and vrata, door, is neuter pluralia tantum. Topic. Names, occupations, and nationalities. In some languages, some names have two forms, a male and a female one. This can be true of occupations and nationalities. For example, Andrew and Andrea in English, or Konstantinos, Konstantinos and Konstantina, Konstantina in Greek. Or actor and actress in English, but doctor for both, and ethopoios, ethopoios actor for both male and female in Greek and geotros, geotros doctor again for both, but with informal female variants geotrina, geotrina and geotrena, geotrena too. Finally, in the case of a nationality, in Greek there are five forms, male and female for people and sometimes for other living beings, and masculine, feminine, and neuter for nouns. For example, English equals Anglos aglos, Anglida aglita, Anglicos aglicos, Anglike agliki, Angliko aglico. To complicate matters, the Greek language often offers additional less formal versions of these. The corresponding for English are the following, Anglesos eglizos, Angleza eglesa, Anglesikos eglesikos, Anglesike eglesiki, Anglesiko eglesiko. The formal forms come from the name Anglia Aglia England, while the less formal are derived from Italian Inglese. Topic. Related linguistic concepts Topic. Noun classes A noun may belong to a given class because of characteristic features of its referent, such as sex, animacy, shape, although in some instances a noun can be placed in a particular class based purely on its grammatical behavior. Some authors use the term, grammatical gender, as a synonym of noun class, but others use different definitions for each. Many authors prefer noun classes. When none of the inflections in a language relate to sex, such as when an animate-inanimate distinction is made. Note however that the word gender derives from Latin genus also the root of genre which originally meant kind, so it does not necessarily have a sexual meaning. Topic. Noun classifiers A classifier, or measure word, is a word or morpheme used in some languages together with a noun, principally to enable numbers and certain other determiners to be applied to the noun. They are not regularly used in English or other European languages, although they parallel the use of words such as pieces and head in phrases like 
three pieces of paper, or 30 head of cattle. They are a prominent feature of East Asian languages, where it is common for all nouns to require a classifier when being quantified, for example, the equivalent of three people is often three classifier people. A more general type of classifier, classifier handshapes can be found in sign languages. Classifiers can be considered similar to genders or noun classes, in that a language which uses classifiers normally has a number of different ones, used with different sets of nouns. These sets depend largely on properties of the things that the nouns denote for example, a particular classifier may be used for long thin objects, another for flat objects, another for people, another for abstracts, etc., although sometimes a noun is associated with a particular classifier more by convention than for any obvious reason. However it is also possible for a given noun to be usable with any of several classifiers, for example, the Mandarin Chinese classifier gi gi is frequently used as an alternative to various more specific classifiers. <laughs> Gender of pronouns As noted above, pronouns may agree in gender with the noun or noun phrase to which they refer their antecedent. Sometimes, however, there is no antecedent, the referent of the pronoun is deduced indirectly from the context. In such cases, the pronoun is likely to agree with the natural gender of the referent. Examples of this can be in most European languages, including English the personal pronouns he, she and it are used depending on whether the referent is male, female, or inanimate or non-human, this is in spite of the fact that English does not generally have grammatical gender. A parallel example is provided by the object suffixes of verbs in Arabic, which correspond to object pronouns, and which also inflect for gender in the second person, though not in the first. I love you, said to a male, yuhabuka. I love you, said to a female, yuhabuki, auhibuki. Not all languages have gendered pronouns. In languages that never had grammatical gender, there is normally just one word for he and she. Like dia in Indonesian, o in Hungarian, and o in Turkish. These languages might only have different pronouns and inflections in the third person to differentiate between people and inanimate objects, but even this distinction is often absent. In written Finnish, for example, han is used for he and she and say for it, but in the colloquial language say is usually used for he and she as well. For more on these different types of pronoun, see gender-specific pronoun and gender-neutral pronoun. Issues may arise in languages with gender-specific pronouns in cases when the gender of the referent is unknown or not specified, this is discussed under gender-neutral language, and in relation to English at singular they. In some cases the gender of a pronoun is not marked in the form of the pronoun itself, but is marked on other words by way of agreement. Thus the French word for I is je, regardless of who is speaking, but this word becomes feminine or masculine depending on the sex of the speaker, as may be reflected through adjective agreement, je suis forte, I am strong, spoken by a female, je suis fort, the same spoken by a male. In null subject languages and in some elliptical expressions in other languages, such agreement may take place even though the pronoun does not in fact appear. For example, in Portuguese, I am very grateful. Said by a male, muito obrigado. The same, said by a female, muito obrigado. Two sentences above mean literally, much obliged. The adjective agrees with the natural gender of the speaker, that is, with the gender of the first person pronoun which does not appear explicitly here. Topic. Indefinite and dummy pronouns A dummy pronoun is a type of pronoun used when a particular verb argument such as the subject is non-existent, but when a reference to the argument is nevertheless syntactically required. They occur mostly in non-prodrop languages, such as English because in prodrop languages the position of the argument can be left empty. Examples in English are the uses of it in It's raining and It's nice to relax. When a language has gendered pronouns, the use of a particular word as a dummy pronoun may involve the selection of a particular gender, even though there is no noun to agree with. In languages with a neuter gender, a neuter pronoun is usually used, as in German s regnet, it rains, it's raining. 
Where s is the neuter third person singular pronoun, English behaves similarly, because the word it comes from the Old English neuter gender. In languages with only masculine and feminine genders, the dummy pronoun may be the masculine third person singular, as in the French for it's raining, il plu, where il means he or it. When referring to masculine nouns, although some languages use the feminine, as in the equivalent Welsh sentence, may high and bwrw gla, where the dummy pronoun is high, which means she or it when referring to feminine nouns. A similar, apparently arbitrary gender assignment may need to be made in the case of indefinite pronouns, where the referent is generally unknown. In this case the question is usually not which pronoun to use, but which gender to assign a given pronoun to for such purposes as adjective agreement. For example, the French pronouns quelqu'un, someone, person, no one, and quelque chose, something are all treated as masculine, this is in spite of the fact that the last two correspond to feminine nouns person meaning person and chose meaning thing for other situations in which such a default gender assignment may be required, see section mixed and indeterminate gender below. Topic. Grammatical versus natural gender The natural gender of a noun, pronoun or noun phrase is a gender to which it would be expected to belong based on relevant attributes of its referent. This usually means masculine or feminine, depending on the referent sex or gender in the sociological sense. For example, in Spanish, mujer, woman, is feminine whereas hombre, man, is masculine. These attributions occur solely due to the semantically inherent gender character of each noun. The grammatical gender of a noun does not always coincide with its natural gender. An example of this is the German word Mädchen, girl. This is derived from maid, maiden, umlauted to mad, with the diminutive suffix chen, and this suffix always makes the noun grammatically neuter. Hence the grammatical gender of Mädchen is neuter, although its natural gender is feminine because it refers to a female person. Other examples include Old English wif neuter and wifeman masculine, meaning woman. German weeb neuter, meaning woman. The word is now pejorative and generally replaced with die Frau, originally lady, femme. Of obsolete der Frau, meaning lord. Irish kalen masculine, meaning girl and stale feminine meaning stallion scottish gaelic boranic masculine meaning woman slovenian decal neuter meaning girl portuguese mulherau masculine meaning voluptuous woman normally such exceptions are a small minority when a noun with conflicting natural and grammatical gender is the antecedent of a pronoun it may not be clear which gender of pronoun to choose there is a certain tendency to keep the grammatical gender when a close back reference is made, but to switch to natural gender when the reference is further away. For example, in German, the sentence is, The girl has come home from school. She is now doing her homework. can be translated in two ways. Das Mädchen n, East aus der Schule Jekommen. S n, matched jetzt sein n, Hasaufgaben. Das Mädchen n, East aus der Schule Jekommen. Sai f, matched jetzt ihre f, hasaufgaben, though the second sentence may appear grammatically incorrect constructio ad sensum, it is common in speech. With one or more intervening sentences, the second form becomes even more likely. However, a switch to the natural gender is never possible with articles and attributive pronouns or adjectives. Thus it can never be correct to say asterisk eine Mädchen, a girl, with female indefinite article or asterisk dies kleine Mädchen. This little girl, with female demonstrative pronoun and adjective. This phenomenon is quite popular in Slavic languages, for example, Polish kreatora deprecative creature is feminine but can be used to refer both man, masculine gender, woman, feminine gender, child, neuter gender, or even animate nouns, e.g., a dog being masculine. Similarly, with other deprecatory nouns as Pierdola, Ciapa, Lamaga, Lodza, Nizidara, Wuss, Klutz. Nemoa, mute, can used deprecatively as described previously, and then can be used for verbs marked for the male and female genders. Topic: Animals. 
In the case of languages which have masculine and feminine genders, the relation between biological sex and grammatical gender tends to be less exact in the case of animals than in the case of people. In Spanish, for instance, a cheetah is always un guepardo and a zebra is always una cebra feminine, regardless of their biological sex. To specify the sex of an animal, an adjective may be added, as in un guepardo hembra, a female cheetah, or una cebra macho, a male zebra. Different names for the male and the female of a species are more frequent for common pets or farm animals, e.g. English cow and bull, Spanish vaca, cow, and toro, bull. As regards the pronouns used to refer to animals, these generally agree in gender with the nouns denoting those animals, rather than the animal's sex natural gender. In a language like English, which does not assign grammatical gender to nouns, the pronoun used for referring to objects it is often used for animals also. However, if the sex of the animal is known, and particularly in the case of companion animals, the gendered pronouns he and she may be used as they would be for a human. In Polish, a few general words such as zwerz, animal, or bital, animal, one head of cattle, are neuter, but most species names are masculine or feminine. When the sex of an animal is known, it will normally be referred to using gendered pronouns consistent with its sex, otherwise the pronouns will correspond to the gender of the noun denoting its species. Topic. Mixed and indeterminate gender There are certain situations where the assignment of gender to a noun, pronoun or noun phrase may not be straightforward. This includes in particular Groups of mixed gender References to people or things of unknown or unspecified gender. In languages with masculine and feminine gender, the masculine is usually employed by default to refer to persons of unknown gender, and to groups of people of mixed gender. Thus, in French the feminine plural pronoun elles always designates an all-female group of people or stands for a group of nouns all of feminine gender, but the masculine equivalent ils may refer to a group of males or masculine nouns, to a mixed group, or to a group of people of unknown genders. In such cases, one says that the feminine gender is semantically marked, whereas the masculine gender is unmarked. In English, the problem of gender determination does not arise in the plural, because gender in that language is reflected only in pronouns, and the plural pronoun they does not have gendered forms. In the singular, however, the issue frequently arises when a person of unspecified or unknown gender is being referred to. In this case it has been traditional to use the masculine he, but other solutions are now often preferred, see gender-neutral language and singular they. In languages with a neuter gender, such as Slavic and Germanic languages, the neuter is often used for indeterminate gender reference, particularly when the things referred to are not people. In some cases this may even apply when referring to people, particularly children. For example, in English, one may use it to refer to a child, particularly when speaking generically rather than about a particular child of known sex. In Icelandic, which preserves a masculine-feminine neuter distinction in both singular and plural, the neuter is used for indeterminate or mixed gender reference even when talking about people. For example, the greeting velkomin, welcome, is altered depending on who is being spoken to. Velkomin, masculine singular to one male person. Velkomin, feminine singular to one female person. Velkomi, neuter singular to someone whose gender is unknown. Velkomnir masculine plural to a group of males Velkomnir feminine plural to a group of females Velkomin neuter plural to a mixed or indeterminate group nevertheless even in Icelandic the feminine is considered somewhat more marked than the masculine In Swedish which has an overall common neuter gender system masculinity may be argued to be a marked feature because in the weak adjectival declension there is a distinct ending e for naturally masculine nouns as in min lillebror my little brother. In spite of this, the third person singular masculine pronoun han would normally be the default for a person of unknown gender, although in practice the indefinite pronoun man and the reflexive sig or its possessive forms sin, sit, sina usually make this unnecessary. In Polish, where a gender like distinction is made in the plural between masculine personal and all other cases, see below, a group is treated as masculine personal if it contains at least one male person. In languages which preserve a three-way gender division in the plural, the rules for determining the gender and sometimes number of a coordinated noun phrase and 
may be quite complex. Czech is an example of such a language, with a division in the plural between masculine animate, masculine inanimate, feminine, and neuter. The rules for gender and number of coordinated phrases in that language are summarized at Czech declension section gender and number of compound phrases. <laughs> gender correspondence between languages Nouns which have the same meanings in different languages need not have the same gender. This is particularly so in the case of things with no natural gender, such as sexless objects. There is nothing objective about a table, for example, which would cause it to be associated with any particular gender, and different languages words for table are found to have various genders, feminine, as with the French table, masculine, as with German tisch, or neuter, as with Norwegian board, even within a given language, nouns that denote the same concept may differ in gender, for example, of two German words for car. Wagon is masculine whereas auto is neuter. Cognate nouns in closely related languages are likely to have the same gender, because they tend to inherit the gender of the original word in the parent language. For instance, in the Romance languages, the words for son are masculine, being derived from the Latin masculine noun sol, whereas the words for moon are feminine, being derived from the Latin feminine luna. This contrasts with the genders found in German, where zana son, is feminine, and mond moon, is masculine. However, there are exceptions to this principle. For instance, arte art, is feminine in Italian, like the Latin word ars from which it stems, but in French, the corresponding word art is masculine. Likewise, the word for boat is neuter in German das Boot, but common gender in Swedish en bat. Some more examples of the above phenomena are given below, these come mostly from the Slavic languages, where gender largely correlates with the noun ending. The Russian word luna moon, is feminine, whereas masak crescent moon, also meaning month, is masculine. In Polish, another Slavic language, the word for moon is szczek, which is masculine. Russian also has two words for potato, kartofel which is masculine, and kartoska which is feminine. In Polish the loanword tramwaj tram, is masculine, whereas the cognate loanword in Czech, tramvaj, is feminine. In Romanian, tramvaj is neuter. The Polish word tiziak thousand, is masculine, whereas the cognate in Russian, tysaka is feminine. The Spanish word origin, origin is masculine, but its close relatives origem from Portuguese and oryx from Galician and Asturian are feminine. The French word equipe team is feminine, while the Spanish word equipo is masculine. The Spanish form contrasts with Brazilian Portuguese equipe and European Portuguese equipa, both of which are feminine. The Italian word simia ape, is feminine, whereas the Spanish word simio is masculine. Topic. Gender in words borrowed from one language by another Ibrahim identifies several processes by which a language assigns a gender to a newly borrowed word. These processes follow patterns by which even children, through their subconscious recognition of patterns, can often correctly predict a noun's gender. If the noun is animate, natural gender tends to dictate grammatical gender. The borrowed word tends to take the gender of the native word it replaces. If the borrowed word happens to have a suffix that the borrowing language uses as a gender marker, the suffix tends to dictate gender. If the borrowed word rhymes with one or more native words, the latter tend to dictate gender. The default assignment is the borrowing language's unmarked gender. Rarely, the word retains the gender it had in the donor language. This tends to happen more frequently in more formal language such as scientific terms, where some knowledge of the donor language can be expected, sometimes the gender of a word switches with time. For example, the Russian modern loanword visky whiskey, was originally feminine, then masculine, and today it has become neuter. Topic. Useful roles Ibrahim identified three possible useful roles of grammatical gender. In a language with explicit inflections for gender, it is easy to express the natural gender of animate beings. Grammatical gender can be a valuable tool of disambiguation, rendering clarity about antecedents. In literature, gender can be used to 
animate and personify inanimate nouns. Among these, role 2 is probably the most important in everyday usage. Languages with gender distinction generally have fewer cases of ambiguity concerning, for example, pronominal reference. In the English phrase, a flowerbed in the garden which I maintain, only context tells us whether the relative clause which I maintain refers to the whole garden or just the flowerbed. In German, gender distinction prevents such ambiguity. The word for flower bed beet is neuter, whereas that for garden, garden is masculine. Hence, if a neuter relative pronoun is used, the relative clause refers to bed, and if a masculine pronoun is used, the relative clause refers to garden. Because of this, languages with gender distinction can often use pronouns where in English a noun would have to be repeated in order to avoid confusion. It does not, however, help in cases where the words are of the same grammatical gender. There are often several synonymous nouns of different grammatical gender to pick from to avoid this, however. Moreover, grammatical gender may serve to distinguish homophones. It is a quite common phenomenon in language development for two phonemes to merge, thereby making etymologically distinct words sound alike. In languages with gender distinction, however, these word pairs may still be distinguishable by their gender. For example, French pot, pot, and peau, skin, are homophones, po, but disagree in gender, la pot versus la peau. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Influence on culture. According to research by Lyra Boroditsky, grammatical genders are among the aspects of languages that shape how people think, a hypothesis called linguistic relativity. In one study by Boroditsky, in which native speakers of German and Spanish were asked to describe everyday objects in English, she found that they were more likely to use attributes conventionally associated with the genders of the objects in their native languages. For instance, German speakers more often described Bruck f bridge with words like beautiful, elegant, fragile, peaceful, pretty, and slender, whereas Spanish speakers, which use puente m, used terms like big, dangerous, long, strong, sturdy, and towering. Also according to Boroditsky, the gender in which concepts are anthropomorphized in art is dependent, in 85% of all cases, on the grammatical gender of the concept in the artist's language. Therefore, in German art Todd m. death is generally portrayed as a man, but in Russian art smirt f. death is generally portrayed as a woman. A problem with such arguments is that, as argued by Adèle Mercier, in French and many other languages the same class of objects can be referred to by words of different grammatical gender. Some languages, such as Armenian, lack grammatical gender for both pronouns and nouns. In a recent study by Rafik Santrosian native speakers of Armenian were given epicene gender neutral words denoting different occupations. The subjects predominantly associated words that imply high agency e.g. leader, mayor, doctor etc. with maleness, and words denoting subservient and sexually objectified positions with femaleness. Santrosian concludes that the cultural understanding of gender in contemporary Armenian is constructed around the axis of agency. Topic. By language Grammatical gender is a common phenomenon in the world's languages. A typological survey of 174 languages revealed that over one-fourth of them had grammatical gender. Gender systems rarely overlap with numerical classifier systems. Gender and noun class systems are usually found in fusional or agglutinating languages, whereas classifiers are more typical of isolating languages. Thus, according to Johanna Nichols, these characteristics correlate positively with the presence of grammatical gender in the world's languages. Location in an area with languages featuring noun classes Preference for head-marking morphology Moderate to high morphological complexity Non-accusative alignment Indo-European Many Indo-European languages, but not English, provide archetypical examples of grammatical gender. Research indicates that the earliest stages of Proto-Indo-European had two genders animate and inanimate, as did Hittite, the earliest attested Indo-European language. The classification of nouns based on animacy and inanimacy and the lack of gender are today characteristic of Armenian. 
According to the theory, the animate gender, which unlike the inanimate had independent vocative and accusative forms, later split into masculine and feminine, thus originating the three-way classification into masculine, feminine and neuter. Many Indo-European languages retained the three genders, including most Slavic languages, Latin, Sanskrit, ancient and modern Greek, and German. In them, there is a high but not absolute correlation between grammatical gender and declensional class. Many linguists believe that to be true of the middle and late stages of Proto-Indo-European. However, many languages reduced the number of genders to two. Some lost the neuter, leaving masculine and feminine like most Romance languages see Vulgar Latin section loss of neuter gender. A few traces of the neuter remain, such as the distinct Spanish pronoun elo and Italian nouns with so-called mobile gender, as well as Hindustani and the Celtic languages. Others merged feminine and masculine into a common gender but retained the neuter, as in Swedish and Danish and, to some extent, Dutch, see gender in Danish and Swedish and gender in Dutch grammar. Finally, some languages, such as English and Afrikaans, have nearly completely lost grammatical gender retaining only some traces, such as the English pronouns he, she, they, and it, Afrikaans hi, sai, hull, and dit, Bengali, Persian, Assamese, Ossetic, Odia, Koer, and Kalasha have lost it entirely. On the other hand, some Slavic languages can be argued to have added new genders to the classical three see below. <inaudible> English Although grammatical gender was a fully productive inflectional category in Old English, Modern English has a much less pervasive gender system, primarily based on natural gender and reflected essentially in pronouns only. There are a few traces of gender marking in Modern English. Some words take different derived forms depending on the natural gender of the referent, such as actor, actress and widow, widower. The third person singular personal pronouns and their possessive forms are gender specific, he, him, his masculine gender, used for men, boys, and male animals, she, hers feminine gender, for women, girls, and female animals, the singular they, them, theirs neuter gender, used for people or animals of unknown, irrelevant, or non-binary gender, and it, its neuter gender, mainly for objects, abstractions and animals. There are also distinct personal and non-personal forms but no differentiation by natural gender in the case of certain interrogations prerogative and relative pronouns, who, whom for persons, corresponding to he, she, and the singular they, and which corresponding to it, however, these are relatively insignificant features compared with a typical language with full grammatical gender. English nouns are not generally considered to belong to gender classes in the way that French, German or Russian nouns are. There is no gender agreement in English between nouns and their modifiers articles, other determiners, or adjectives, with the occasional exception such as blonde, blonde, a spelling convention borrowed from French. Gender agreement applies in effect only to pronouns, and the choice of pronoun is determined based on semantics perceived qualities of the thing being referred to rather than on any conventional assignment of particular nouns to particular genders. Only a relatively small number of English nouns have distinct male and female forms. Many of them are loanwords from non-Germanic languages. The suffixes res and rix in words such as actress and aviatrix, for instance, derive from Latin rix, in the first case via the French rice. English has no live productive gender markers. An example of such a marker might be the suffix et of French provenance, but this is seldom used today, surviving mostly in either historical contexts or with disparaging or humorous intent. The gender of an English pronoun typically coincides with the natural gender of its referent, rather than with the grammatical gender of its antecedent. The choice between she, he, they, and it comes down to whether the pronoun is intended to designate a woman, a man, or someone or something else. There are certain exceptions, however. With animals, it is usually used, but when the sex of the animal is known, it may be referred to as he or she particularly when expressing an emotional connection with the animal, as with a pet. See also section animals above. Certain non-human things are referred to with the pronoun she, her, hers, particularly countries and ships, and sometimes other vehicles or machines. See gender in English section ships. That usage is considered an optional figure of speech, it is also in decline, and advised against by most journalistic style guides. Problems arise when selecting a personal pronoun to refer to someone of unspecified or unknown gender see also section mixed and indeterminate gender above. In the past and to some degree still in the present, the masculine has been used as the default gender in English. The use of the plural pronoun they with singular reference is common in practice. 
The neuter it may be used for a baby but not normally for an older child or adult. Other genderless pronouns exist, such as the impersonal pronoun one, but they are not generally substitutable for a personal pronoun. For more information, see gender neutral language and singular they. Topic. Slavic languages The Slavic languages mostly continue the Proto Indo European system of three genders masculine, feminine, and neuter. Gender correlates largely with noun endings masculine nouns typically end in a consonant, feminines in a and neuters in o but there are many exceptions, particularly in the case of nouns whose stems end in a soft consonant. However, some of the languages, including Russian, Czech, Slovak and Polish, also make certain additional grammatical distinctions between animate and inanimate nouns, Polish in the plural, and Russian in the accusative case, differentiate between human and non-human nouns. In Russian, the different treatment of animate nouns involves their accusative case and that of adjectives qualifying them being formed identically to the genitive rather than to the nominative. In the singular that applies to masculine nouns only, but in the plural it applies in all genders. See Russian declension. A similar system applies in Czech, but the situation is somewhat different in the plural, only masculine nouns are affected, and the distinctive feature is a distinct inflective ending for masculine animate nouns in the nominative plural and for adjectives and verbs agreeing with those nouns. See Czech declension. Polish might be said to distinguish five genders, personal masculine referring to male humans, animate non-personal masculine, inanimate masculine, feminine, and neuter. The animate-inanimate opposition for the masculine gender applies in the singular, and the personal-impersonal opposition, which classes animals along with inanimate objects, applies in the plural. A few nouns denoting inanimate things are treated grammatically as animate and vice versa. The manifestations of the differences are as follows. In the singular, masculine animates in the standard declension have an accusative form identical to the genitive, and masculine inanimates have accusative identical to the nominative. The same applies to adjectives qualifying these nouns, the same as in Russian and Czech. Also, Polish masculine animates always form their genitive in a, whereas in the case of inanimates some usa and some u, animate, dobry klient, good customer, nominative, dobrego klienta, accusative and genitive, Animate, dobry pies, good dog, nominative, dobrego psa, accusative and genitive. Inanimate, dobry eser, good cheese, nominative and accusative, dobrego sera, genitive only. In the plural, masculine personal nouns, but not other animate nouns, take accusatives that are identical to the genitives. They also typically take different endings in the nominative, e.g., i rather than y. Such endings also appear on adjectives and past tense verbs. The two features are analogous to features of Russian and Czech respectively, except that those languages make an animate, inanimate distinction rather than personal, impersonal. Examples of the Polish system, personal, dobrzy klinci, good customers, nominative, dobrych klinto, accusative and genitive, impersonal, dobre sai, good dogs, nominative and accusative, dobrych sau, genitive only, impersonal, dobre seri, good cheeses. Nominative and accusative, dobrich sero, genitive only. A few nouns have both personal and impersonal forms, depending on meaning. For example, client may behave as an impersonal noun when it refers to a client in the computing sense. For more information on the above inflection patterns, see Polish morphology. For certain rules concerning the treatment of mixed gender groups, see section mixed and indeterminate gender above. Topic: Dravidian. In the Dravidian languages, nouns are classified primarily on the basis of their semantic properties. The highest level classification of nouns is often described as being between rational and non-rational. Nouns representing humans and deities are considered rational, and other nouns those representing animals and objects are treated as non-rational. Within the rational class, there are further subdivisions into masculine, feminine, and collective nouns. For further information, see Tamil grammar. Topic. Other In the Austronesian Wuvu Luau language, vocative words used when addressing a relative often specify the speaker's gender. 
For example, Taffy means sister of female, Ari means opposite gender sibling, and Wayne means female's father's sister or female's brother's daughter. See also gender neutrality in languages with grammatical gender, international auxiliary languages and gender specific pronoun constructed languages. Topic: <laughs> Constructed languages. Many constructed languages have natural gender systems similar to that of English. Animate nouns can have distinct forms reflecting natural gender, and personal pronouns are selected according to natural gender. Some constructed languages have no gender agreement on modifiers. Topic. Auxiliary languages Esperanto has no grammatical gender. The female suffix in, sometimes quoted as an example, is simply one of many suffixes intended to simplify the vocabulary and make the language easier and faster to learn. There are no accompanying features of grammatical gender such as different articles or markers applying to associated adjectives. Although it differentiates a small number of male and female nouns, such as patro father and patrino mother for the reason described above, most nouns are gender neutral and the use of it is not necessary. For instance, hundo means either a male or female dog, virhundo means a male dog, and hundino means a female dog. Personal pronouns li he and si she and their possessive forms lia his and sia her are used for male and female antecedents, and gi it and its possessive form gia its are used to refer to a nonpersonal antecedent. Ido has the masculine infix ul and the feminine infix in for animate beings. Both are optional and used only if it is necessary to avoid ambiguity. Cato a cat, catulo, a male cat, catino, a female cat. There are third person singular and plural pronouns for all three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter, but also gender free pronouns. Interlingua has no grammatical gender. It indicates only the natural gender, as in matra, mother, and patra, father. Interlingua speakers may use feminine endings. For example, a may be used in place of o in cato, producing cata, female cat. Professora may be used to denote a professor who is female, and actrisa may be used to mean actress. As in Edo, inflections marking gender are optional, but some gender-specific nouns such as femina, woman, happen to end in a or o. Interlingua has feminine pronouns, and its general pronoun forms are also used as masculine pronouns. Topic. Artistic languages The Klingon language by Mark Okren divides nouns into beings capable of using language, body parts and others. Regular nouns in these categories form plurals with the endings pu, do, and may respectively. The first category also has a separate possessive suffix in the first and second persons. High Valyrian, built by David J. Peterson for the TV series Game of Thrones, has four grammatical genders, none of which are related to natural gender see also Valyrian languages hashtag nouns. Quenya and Sindarin, created by J. R. R. Tolkien, do not have grammatical gender. However, both languages do have some nouns marked for natural gender, for example, Quenya Seldo child M, Seld child F, Selda child N. Modifiers in Quenya agree with their head noun in number only. Topic. See also Gender neutral language Gender neutrality in genderless languages Gender neutrality in languages with grammatical gender Gender neutral language in English Gender specific job title Generic antecedents Grammatical conjugation Topic. Notes Topic. Bibliography